Well, warm welcome to today's talk. It's Sunday evening, the, the 1st of May. I was going to stop doing as many COVID things, but there's so many interesting things still happening, and I really couldn't resist this one. And uh, I think you'll see why. It's a new publication by Dr. I mean, uh, Mr. Uh, Bill Gates. Let me just show you this here. So um, he's written this book, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic by uh, Bill Gates and it's published um, at uh, uh, by Alan Lane apparently at £25. Now um, I must say I'm a bit um, a bit torn I'd quite like to read it but I'm a bit reluctant to pay £25 that's about what $35 because my books without being too self-righteous about it are completely free you can download them free in fact I can put the link if you want, but Bill Gates's book seems to cost £25. I expect Mr Gates will be making a, a, a free downloadable PDF available any day now, at least I would hope so. But let's look at what, it, what he's saying here. Now, um, now this, there's several news articles here because the book actually doesn't come out for a, a couple of days yet. Um, I think it's coming out on Wednesday or something like that. Um, so the newspaper articles are a bit unclear as to what is in the book and what Mr. Gates is saying anyway. Um, but um, I think this is just something he said anyway, talking about this pandemic. Uh, he says this, um, it's not likely. I don't want to be a voice of doom and gloom, but it's way above a 5% risk that this pandemic, we haven't seen the worst of it. So... Um, in, in, in interesting point of view. So g given that 99% or more of people in the UK, for example, have got uh, some form of antibodies now, given that billions of people around the world have been infected uh, by this virus in combination with the immunity from the, from the vaccines, given that people are being reinfected with less pathogenic strains, such as the Omicron BA2, and the sub-variants of BA2, that there's massive natural immunity being generated. And there's lots of signs we're entering into endemicity. Mr Gates thinks there's a above a 5% chance that there's going to be a, a serious problem. Now, I assume what he's worried about is a mutation which makes this virus much more pathogenic. But it's unlikely that there'll be a mutation that makes it much more pathogenic, making people sicker, and... Um, increasing the transmissibility that that's not very likely because we're, we're at a transmissibility now which is on a par with measles this is as transmissible as viruses get uh, according to human knowledge so far so it would be surprising if we had something that was out competing the sub variants of BA2 but was more pathogenic but th th this is this is his view and we can assume that uh we can assume that Mr. Gates, I would think, is well uh, advised. Um, so that's what he's saying. He thinks that it could get significantly worse. Um, I think from what I've said, you can see that I don't agree with, with Mr. Gates' uh, concern here. OK, it's possible, but it's just I think it's just way less likely than 5%. But um, when, when we get more information, we'll know what he's basing that on and we'll be in a better position to uh, comment. But anyway, getting on to the book. So this is the book itself, Bill Gates, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic. And I must say, it's a really great infographic. I mean, um, I really like infographics, as you'll see from the, uh, from the poster behind me that we've covered before, um, where, where we're looking at various uh, determinants of health, diet, exercise, the mind-body interaction, toxic substances, genetics infection, social interactions and the natural uh, environment is my rather poor infographic but this is this is a really this is a really good infographic here I must say um, so here we have presumably a pandemic and this is the path of humankind and it just avoids it so uh, full marks for a brilliant uh, infographic now um, this gentleman um, seems to have received his own personal copy and uh, is here uh, flaunting it. Now, for some reason, um, for some reason, I, I haven't received my personal copy from Mr. Gates yet. So um, maybe it's in the post. I won't get it tomorrow because it's a bank holiday in England. But maybe it'll come on Tuesday. Uh, we, we can hope. <laughs> but uh, here, we, here, we, here we see Dr. Tedros with his personal copy uh, looking uh, very 
pleased with it. It's almost as if they're mates, really, isn't it? Um, so, so there he is with his, his personal uh, copy, How to Prevent the Next Pandemic. Um, we're too late to prevent the, the one we've just had, um, largely, in my view, due to the uh, ineptitude of the World Health Organization advising that flights from China carry on when flights from China patently could have been stopped. But maybe, maybe they'll do better next time. And I know I'm being a bit sarcastic here, but uh, it's either that or get angry, really, isn't it? So uh, take it, take it as you uh, as you understand the facts yourself. So there you go. Uh, Dr. Tedros has got his personal copy. Uh, I haven't. <laughs> uh, I'm sure most of you haven't either. Now, um, he's proposing this thing called. So the title of the book that's the title of the book up there. Um, it's How to Prevent the Next Pandemic, simple as the title of the book, yeah, as, as we saw there. Right. So that's the title of the book. Now, his strategy here is, is a global epidemic response and mobilisation initiative. So um, that's uh, not too snappy a title, but that's what he's, uh, that's what he's called that. Um, there we go. Um, and he says that this should be managed by the World Health Organization. Um, uh, really? It should be organized by the World Health Organization? OK, we believe that's what's in the book. As I say, I'm only going on press reports of what's in the book. Uh, I haven't got a copy now. Now, there is um, I, I did ratch around for about half an hour before I did this video. And there does seem to be a PDF of the first chapter in Spanish, but I couldn't find anything in uh, English, so we look forward to that. Uh, hopefully, free PDF uh, copy available because if this is how to prevent a pandemic, the whole world should be should be uh, available to get this knowledge free. I, I would hope um, should be managed by the world. So, so th this global epidemic response and mobilisation initiative should be managed by the WHO. Okay, that's his view. Uh, it should be a team of epidemiologists and computer modellers. Uh, dedicated to this task and two to three thousand of them now I certainly have no um, objection to the uh, epidemiologists of course we need epidemiologists scientists doctors clinicians of all sorts scientists of many hues but I must say the modelers in this pandemic have been less than impressive and haven't always been completely accurate without mentioning any specific names or institutions even though some may come to mind so computer modelling would really need to be improved quite significantly, I think, to be pragmatically useful in this sort of uh, endeavour. But that's that's what he's uh, suggesting there. Um, the only body capable of putting together a top-notch team of experts, which of course we need a top-notch team of experts, of course, but he thinks the WHO is the only body capable of that. This is going to cost something like $55 billion uh, a year. Um, not entirely clear where that's coming from, but I believe he does make an argument which is valid in that spending $55 billion, if we'd done that a few years ago to prevent this pandemic, would have saved a heck of a lot more money than $55 billion. So it, it is a proactive investment. Investing in health is a highly proactive investment with huge returns. And I agree with him there completely. Um, you can judge whether that's likely to occur or not. I suspect uh, not. Uh, he also says, and this is a direct quote, strengthen healthcare systems in low and middle income countries. Um, I'm not quite sure why he would say that, because it is rather obvious. We know that apple pie tastes really nice and motherhood is a good idea. Obviously, we need to strengthen. This is what we've been talking about for years, haven't we? This is this is why we've got our community project uh, in Uganda, for example. This is exactly what we need to strengthen. So, okay, let's not be cynical. Let's let's agree with Mr. Gates on that, because we can agree that this is necessary, but it's just completely obvious. Now, he seems to think that with this, we can have eradication of a whole family of respiratory diseases, which would mean no more coronaviruses like COVID. And even better, no more flu. Um, now, this really does surprise me that this is in there. So we, we know that coronavirus, uh, for example, comes from spillover infection. We know that influenza A comes from avine sources primarily, sometimes via, uh, via, via um, 
um, pigs as in swine flu, uh, p potentially other animal vectors. But these are spillover infections and it's hard to see how we would actually stop these. Uh, the, the influenza A, the influenza B is more the endemic form. So how, how quite how this would stop spillover infections, I'm not really sure. And the idea that you could get rid of influenza A from, from the genetic um, shift that, 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 that occurs uh, in the virus sometimes and how you would get rid of the endemic forms of influenza B, I, I really don't know. I'm, I am intrigued to, to see um, if, if this book becomes available, what that... Um, what that actually means um but i don't really see that this is feasible um now this is a publication from the bill and melinda gates foundation and, and this is where i do agree with them uh, completely and here he's talking about the uh, the economics um the, the the economics of of healthcare largely and he's talking about making various investments and the return you get for your investment now, um, the, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation um, has uh, donated $10 billion uh, to, to various health uh, initiatives, um, which is a, it's, it's a good sum of money, $10 billion, obviously. What, but he says this, this is direct from the website, what have we invested $10 billion in energy projects in the developing world? In that case, the return would have been $150 billion. In other words, if he had invested his uh, $10 billion uh, um, in, into uh, energy projects, that would have increased productivity to the point where people could have made an extra $150 billion, which, of course, is excellent. W what a good return on investment. Why isn't this being done more? Um, probably the, the, the reason is largely corruption in countries that are poor. I'm not saying we're around without corruption, of course, in the United States and the United Kingdom. We're certainly not, but it's not, at, it's not as endemic as it is in some of these poor countries. But the, the fact that remains uh, that that is the estimate um, for what uh, the return of the $10 billion would have been. Uh, infrastructure, improving roads, improving rail, uh, improving infrastructure projects, water engineering, uh, $170 billion, uh, potential return from the $10 billion there. But investing in global health uh, institution, uh, global health institutions, however, we exceed all of those returns. The 10 billion that we gave to help provide vaccines, drugs, uh, bed nets to prevent uh, malaria, for example, they gave out a lot of medicated, well, millions, I think, medicated uh, mosquito nets. Absolutely brilliant. Keep it as simple as possible. Um, malaria is still, of course, a devastating disease. Bed nets and other supplies in developing countries create an estimated 200 billion in social and economic benefits. So there, there we see that by investing in these in these things, um, you get a 20 to one uh, return for your money. Invest 10 billion dollars, get 200 billion dollars of, of economic benefit out from that. So um, we'll look forward to the books, uh, to the book. If you, uh, I'll put a link to mine. If you do want to download these uh, free PDFs, you can. Now, it, it, I'm really pleased about this because in hard copy, I've, I've sold probably about, I don't know, about 10,000 of each of these in hard copy, um, which, which, which is fine. And we've donated a lot, which is also fine. But the, 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 the PDFs, the free PDFs, uh, you good people have downloaded about a quarter of a million of them. So... Uh, given that you spend a lot of time writing these books, um, you know, to, to know to think that potentially a quarter of a million people are reading them is, is really quite it's really quite nice. It justifies all those long evenings and weekends you spend in front of a, a word processor. Um, so do do download them; that they are completely free, and we look forward to Bill Gates's book being the same. Um, I might do another video with this technology, or I might try and get it fixed. But uh, we'll see how we go. But for now, uh, thank you, thank you for watching.